The final round of the regular season has just wrapped up, and playoff matchups are now set. The top teams of the Israeli Basketball Super League are ready for battle, as Maccabi Haifa has its sights set on a back-to-back -back championship. On the court, rigorous preparation is underway. Meanwhile, off the court, the players discover the holiday and also meet some new friends from another sport. It's the final couple of months in Israel for the Americans as they try to make the most of their time in the Holy Land. It is Passover in Israel, and it's time to commemorate the liberation of the Jewish people from slavery. Luckily for Adrian Henning, Ido Kojikuro, and Ben Rice are around to show him the proper way to celebrate the holiday. You know, what's up with Passover? Is it like Easter at the crib? Yeah, almost like Easter at the crib, you know? Big dinner with a lot of our family. We're reading the Agadah. It's a story about the Jewish people, how they are getting out from Egypt. Israeli Jewish uh, holidays, is they try to kill us, we survive, we survive. Yeah, yeah. now let's go eat. So it's kind of that's like... The, <laughs> that's the whole idea. Yeah. Lots of food, too much food. Wow, all kinds of food. Kosher food. The guy in Zuri, his, his mother-in-law is probably top five cooks in Israel. Yeah, pretty much. So we go to the Gosses now and uh, we're going to help you out to survive this uh, holiday. Yeah. All right, let's go. This is good for pesto. Uh, no, thank you. But fish you, in a jar. Look, it looks, yeah, looks, it's looks nice. Fish. Hungarian fish. For you, you need to buy lots of bread. So like this. No, I'll eat it with bread and yes. we'll This is tortilla. Uh, I want you to get the uh, thin. Oh, oh, wow, yeah. You want some crackers, right? Yeah. Let's go. Some crackers. Yeah, we good, man. I think we got everything we need. <laughs> the people who prepare themselves for yeah. the judgment day, they don't understand that bread and hummus can Save them make, all. make them live forever. Is this uh, kosher? Yeah, there is some rabbi named Moshe Yehuda Leib. He's a very smart rabbi in his stem. He says this coke is kosher, so you know. Excellent. The Israeli chocolate. That's a soul food, you know what I'm saying? Oh, that's a soul, soul food. Soul food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matzah. Yeah, matzah. Ah, yeah, yeah, sure. I have to matza. buy some matzah. Yeah. I'm not going to make it. Now I'm going to teach you how to make matzah. Matzah, 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 matzah bread. Yeah. Eggs. Matzah. I know. I'm going to make it. Sugar. He's putting Nutella on there, right? After gathering up all the ingredients, it was time to head to Ben's house to prepare the meal. Show you a traditional food for a Passover. Good job, Ido. I will. Uh, we will wait in the living room. You will finish it. No. Hey, master chef, the That's what I'm talking about. Okay, the park. The main thing. The dessert. The dessert. Yeah. Not bad, huh? Haksomea. 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 Yep. It is nearly playoff time in Israel, and the atmosphere is reminiscent of the championship Maccabi Haifa won nearly a year ago. For the past month, month and a half, we started, uh, attendance is getting bigger and bigger. I think we doubled ourselves the past month or month and a half. So it's nice. It's nice to play when the gym is full and not when the empty, empty seats. The atmosphere is very positive. So it's a positive, it's, it's an atmosphere of families that are coming to have fun, to use the nice facility, to go to the cafe and to the burger. And, and as people tell me, this is the best show in town. That's what we wanted, that's all. With almost an entirely different roster, the story this season was about building chemistry. But now, with a better record at this point than they were a year ago, a repeat championship now becomes a part of the conversation. Just uh, continue to play uh, together as uh, like we play so far, you know. Keep, stay focused, stay focused, because when we're focused, we are hard to beat. But you gotta play your best basketball. And uh, as best it is, there's no, no, no room for error. And you just gotta come out and bring it every night. And there's, uh, 
and just be locked into the game, just focus on the game and, and, and what the other guys do, what they can, can't do. And uh, so far, so good. From from my past experiences, it's worked out. But uh, you know, sometimes, you know, they, they, they play better than we expect. So uh, just come out and play hard. Now in position to defend their title, players have to adjust from being the hunters to being the hunted. It's either you come with the mindset of a hunter, or if you don't, you get hunted. I think, I think it's true about every sport, in every game, and every time. Every team that uh, plays playing against us will come, uh, they know they're going to play against the, the champ. Regardless of whether they're the defending champ or not, we're still the underdogs, you know what I mean? So. Just coming with the same mindset we did last year and just, just play our game and you know don't really worry about don't get caught up in the hype or you know Tel Aviv, you know, this, that and the third. Just just do what we do and uh, I think everything should work itself out. We've been through a lot this season. We've been through a lot, we've seen a lot of stuff, we've fought through a lot of good and bad situations. That's our time right now to use our experience to keep on shopping up to this new lineup. I'm enjoying it. Ready to come here. I'm trying to get. In, I'm trying to get my first championship. So, I'm trying to play hard and uh, listen to coach and do what he says. When we return, a look at the highlights of Maccabi Haifa's strong run at the end of the regular season. Then the guys take a break from the court and head to the pitch to try out a different sport. Things were not looking good for Maccabi Haifa at the beginning of round three of the regular season. They would start with two consecutive losses, both on the road against Hapoel Jerusalem and Hapoel Tel Aviv. The slump dropped them down to fourth place in the standings. Fortunately, the Greens would return home for three straight games, starting with arch rival Maccabi Tel Aviv. Despite defeating them in the championship a year ago, Haifa has not beaten Tel Aviv in the regular season since 2009. Haifa started out with a big lead in the first quarter thanks to a pair of threes from newcomer Terrence Roderick. They would take a commanding 22-10 lead in the second, but Tel Aviv made a big run to cut the lead to one at half. They would trade leads in the third quarter until the Yellows went on a 12-0 run to end the quarter up 50-40. But Dante Smith would come alive in the fourth and lead the attack, and a Yevzuri three put Haifa back on top. The Greens then sealed the game on the defensive end and won it 68-66. Before this game, in the last couple minutes, they always got away from us. And early in the season, that didn't happen. You know, when it got to the end, we always capitalized. So today, today we went back to what worked, and, and, and defense really, really pulled us out of it. Maccabi Haifa carried this momentum into a rematch against Hapoel Jerusalem. Rodrick all the way, fights Randall! <laughs> And another interception by Dante Smith. And it's Robert, finish with the layoff. That green back calls timeout. The combination of Smith, Roderick, and Randall proved to be too much as they combined for 36 of Haifa's 58 in the first half. Turns it over to Dante Smith. And it's Roderick. Smith finished the game with a triple double, and four others scored double figures. They set a team record 32 assists and 17 steals as the Greens defeated the Reds in a rout and their most impressive win of the season, 91-64. We came out aggressive, came out how we started off last week, and um, I think that was the key to the game. A great start. Next up, Hopwell Tel Aviv, a team Haifa struggled with all season, but Haifa's big three took charge again. They took a big lead at the end of the first half and never looked back notching their third straight win and clinched the three seed heading into the playoffs. The win improved Haifa to a franchise best 18 and nine, topping last year's championship team's record of 17 and 10 in the regular season. Getting some much deserved time off the practice court, the players made a trip to the pitch to visit their soccer counterpart, the Maccabi Haifa Football Club. Hello guys. Hey my friend. What's up? Hey, how are you? Oh, how are you? Okay, my friend. Let's go. 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 Let's go
I was in Brazil, I uh, played for Flamingo, the club Flamingo basketball. And so they always train like right next to, to the gym. They always do a lot of cool stuff, so I hope you show me some tricks. I'm tired of seeing the stuff Doogie does in practice. <laughs> It's number one sport in Israel, like soccer, then basketball, then everything else. There was no court around, but that didn't stop the soccer guys from showing off some of their basketball moves. As the tallest man on the field, Alex couldn't pass up the chance to try out being the goalkeeper. Let's go! <laughs> Dagan Yibzuri could not pass up the chance to meet the players from one of the best soccer teams around. Uh, when I was a kid growing up, uh, Maccabi Haifa played the Champions League. They beat teams like uh, Manchester United. They had uh, amazing seasons, both in Israel and in Europe. And uh, yeah, no doubt this is one of the biggest clubs in Israel, for sure. So I must have told that uh, Dugi was the best. He yeah. can come here to try a couple yeah. times with us, I for sure. Hike, you need, for right? sure. You need one. <laughs> Up next, we preview the Super League playoffs and analyze the first round matchups set to begin. The Super League playoff matchups are now finally set. Maccabi Haifa finished the season with a franchise best 18 and 10 record, good for third place. In the first round, they'll face off against six seed Nez Ziona in a best of five series. Maccabi Tel Aviv and Hapoel Jerusalem battled back and forth all season for first place. It was not Tel Aviv's best season. They tallied six losses, a rare occurrence. But the Yellows have been hot toward the end of the season and edged out Jerusalem for the number one seed. They'll face Gilboa Galil's team, who has had a disappointing season. Meanwhile, Hapoel Jerusalem may be one of the favorites this year. They hired former Maccabi Haifa champion coach Brad Greenberg to turn their club around, and he accomplished just that with a strong season. As the number two seed, they will play number seven, Hapoel Halon. The fourth playoff series will feature an interesting matchup between a very good Hapoel Tel Aviv team and last season's surprise underdog Hapoel Eilat. It was a long, grueling season for Maccabi Haifa, one that saw them face adversity with injuries and some changes in the roster. Now, after all the bumps and bruises, the team tries to put it together for the playoffs while surviving injuries. After six months, it can be a finger, it can be one knee, both knees, a toe, an ankle, an Achilles, back spasms, uh, you know, your groin hurts, shoulders hurt. That can all happen at once or it can all just kind of come and go so you never really have a day where you come in and feel fresh. Injuries are part of basketball and part of sports in general. Unfortunately, we went through this uh, problem this year, you know, with the injury of uh, Moan Roth and uh, Brian Randall. And when they came back, Ike Febo tore his ACL. It's a terrible injury. Clive was one of our guys that coming usually off the bench for us. Sometimes, sometimes as a starter, he was spreading up the floor for us. It was a lot easier for us to, to spot up Ike at the wings or at the corners, helping uh, Moran or Dante run pick and roll plays or spread up the floor for uh, shooters and for our big guys to finish in the paint well and get, get high, high percentage of scoring. Or we use the Ike a lot to post up. When I just got the ball, in those areas around the block or popping out, right there it was very difficult to start. He was driving the ball hard or posting up, trying to beat his man, using his physical ability. He was drawing a lot of, free, a lot of fouls, going to the free throw line, shooting with high percentage. Throughout the season, everybody knew his role. And we were kind of set about the way we want to play and the way we want to use them. When I got injured, uh, then we found ourselves in a little bit, bit of a trouble. 
bringing Adrian Henning into the team. We needed to help him out a little bit, making a couple of adjustments. He's not the post target that uh, we used Ike for. Maybe not as good, good of a shooter as Ike is, but he's bringing a lot of quickness. He's running the floor like a gun. He goes out and attacks the boards. And for us, right now, it's a lot of running game, using our quickness, using our athleticism. In practice the last few weeks, he's been getting us to push the ball. Instead of keeping the shot clock at 24 seconds, he's moving it to 14. So as soon as we're coming up the court, we're just, just a lot of up and down, a lot of transition. And we're, we're getting back on defense. So, I mean, with that being said, we got a lot of shot attempts at the ball, and, um, and we're getting in shape. I think that uh, so far we're doing a hell of a job because, you know, we had a really tough injuries in, uh, for the key players in our team, and we are still in the top three teams in Israel, which is a great success. The team is now getting hot at the right time, resulting in the most regular season wins in franchise history. We got Ben Rice in a very good. We got the kind of Yevzuri stepping up to have a great second round and third round regarding scoring the ball and then having a great effect on the team. Everybody is really committed to the club, to the fans, to each other. And uh, that's what a uh, big team is made of. Coming up, Brian Randall learns about life at the Kibbutz to see where his longtime teammate grew up. The principle of a Kibbutz is you give as much as you can and you take as much as you need. He's a, he's a saint, you know, he's a gift for every coach. I call him Jesus, he's a saint. Everybody here says that he's a Statue of Liberty, that he's a model for a basketball player. For years he's the best defensive player in the league. And offensively, the intensity, the sharpness that he's moving on the floor, he's running the floor like a guard, his athleticism is something that is making us a much better team. I know Brian for many years in Israel and I uh, really respect him. First of all, as a person, all his teammates always say that he's a great person and uh, this year I really get a chance to see it. Why here? Because this is where they've wanted me. I used to think that I controlled, you know, where I went, but it's really just who wants you and all you can do is play your game. And so far, Israel's been best offers, good situations. And so, I, you know, I come back and I'm happy. You know, I, I know people here, I know how to get around, I know where to go. And my wife is comfortable, it's been a blessing. I played with him two years in the past before. And he's like family. I used to have him and his wife over for Shabbat dinners like every other week. We got a lot in common. Brian Randall has been teammates with Dagan Yibzuri for quite some time, having played together before both coming to Haifa. They have become friends and know each other quite well, but now Brian gets a chance to learn about a different side of Dagan's Israeli life. This is my uh, working place, man. This is my ride, you know? This is all the merchandise like we make. What is it? Nets, nets like agriculture stuff. How the kibbutz makes its money. I mean, what is the basis of a kibbutz? What is the function? Principle of a kibbutz is you give as much as you can and you take as much as you need. They believe in equal, equ equality, you know? If you run the factory or you just work in the, cook the food in the dining room, you get the same money, you get the same house, yeah. and your kids get the same education. This is scary. This is scary stuff. Where am I going? Am I lifting something? He's showing off right now. <laughs> I'm scared. Ready? Set? Go! Hey! Hey! Hey, that's scary for real. <laughs> There's no control on this thing. This is my Hall of Fame over here. This is where I started playing. Wall of Fame. This here is my uncle. One of them. This here is my grandfather. I was played here in the kibbutz team way before this gym was even built. We got a lot of history here, man. Can you imagine playing on this? 
Imagine playing you know, that. Falling you got, down. You got nice, like, you know, nice metal. When, when you fall down, you can get glass. up there. This is a privilege that I had as a kid. Like, I had the key to this place ever since I was, like, in the fifth grade, I think. So, like, every time I had nothing to do, I just get on my bike, whoop, right over here, open the door, and start shooting. I didn't have a gym when I grew up. I had, I had black top and out, outside. Come on, I'll show you some cows, man. Love the smell of cow in the afternoon. Did you work with any of these cows? No, actually, I never work with the cows. Never, but there's like a machine that does it. You don't really sit with the bucket and do this. <coughs> I got stuck. <coughs> this is the smell of life, B. Come on. It smells like old, like, old olives. <laughs> like rotten olives. It was cool. It was nice. Um, you know, nice to see kind of how, how he grew up, his background a little bit. A little bit more from, more so than what he told me. <laughs> it's a small country, but it's not so different from how we grew up. My grandparents had a farm, and Doogie's from a kibbutz, but it's like, it's like being in a small town, a farming community. If it wasn't basketball, I might be working here. <laughs> I, I still like the simple stuff. Even though basketball opens a lot of doors to many other directions, I still appreciate the simple living. I think that's what I, I'll go back to doing once I'm done with the basketball. No, not with the cows. Something cleaner. <laughs>